Hello and welcome back to the Washita News Show. I'm Ali Hilkema. And I'm Brody Kriegel. We hope you all had a great Easter spent with family and remembering the story of Christ. Well, we are in the final stretch of the semester and things are starting to wrap up for the semester. But we still have a lot to talk about today. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Lexi Lunsford has a forecast. Thank you, Brody. Now let's take a look for the weather this week on campus. As we enter into the first week of April, we're going to see some very pretty days that are perfect for all the springtime activities here on campus. Overall, we will be seeing some very beautiful temperatures with highs in the low 70s and lows in the 40s. As we look later into the week, however, we are expecting a few heavy thunderstorms coming in Sunday night. This will make for quite a wet, warm, and humid end of the week. Focusing on today's weather, we have a great day of 66 degrees and sunshine for students to enjoy on campus. Tomorrow and Friday will look very similar with a high of 70 tomorrow and a high of 73 on Friday. Even with the warm temperatures, however, if you plan on being out and about during the evening, uh, they will get cooler with lows in the 40s, so be sure to grab a light jacket. Moving on to Saturday, we are looking at a partly cloudy day with a high of 70 degrees and a low of 55 to make for a perfect Tiger Serve Day morning. Get out there and enjoy the pretty weather because Sunday temperatures will rise to 81 degrees and there will be thunderstorms that hang around until Tuesday, including on the day of the eclipse. There's a chance of rain and clouds for that day, but we're hoping that these storms clear up so that the weather will be great to plan accordingly for this eclipse. If you have any big clip plans later in the week, be sure to grab that raincoat. Well, that's all we have for you today, Tigers. So go out there and enjoy the sunshine and watch out for the April showers that are to come. Predictions are provided by AccuWeather. Back to the desk. Thank you, Lexi. Well, we're hoping those storms hold off so that we can see that eclipse clearly. Now, Arkadelphia is in the path of totality for the solar eclipse happening on Monday, April 8th. Josh covered it last week, but just to refresh your memory, the eclipse starts at 12.31 p.m. in Arkadelphia and ends at 3.09 p.m. The totality can be seen for 2 minutes and 17 seconds, starting at 1.49 p.m. A solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. Now, we will be able to see the total darkness during that time, but a safety tip. If you look at the sun through anything but glasses with a special purpose solar filter, it can be damaging to your eyes. So, Washita, make sure you have those filtered glasses to view the eclipse. Now, for students, there will be an all-campus watch party at Cliff Harris Stadium starting at 11.30 a.m. This doesn't happen often, so don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And for another once-in-a-life opportunity, a student had to perform in front of Broadway stars. And maybe it's not a once-in-a-life opportunity occurrence for this outstanding singer. Junior musical theater major Amaya Hardin performed as a top three finalist in the Broadway World's Next On Stage competition in New York. Now she came back with gratitude. Madeline Tillis interviewed her about her experience. Let's take a look. Thanks, guys. I'm Madeline Tullis, and I have the privilege of sitting with Amaya Hardin to hear about her New York City debut after she competed in the Broadway World Singing Competition. So Amaya, tell me about how you found out about this opportunity. So I basically am on the Broadway World like subscription list, um, and I'd also competed in this competition before my junior year of high school. So I had already known about the competition, but they took a little hiatus uh, to get some things together, and then they sent out an email that they were doing it again, and I was like, well, I'm a junior in college now, so I might as well do it again, and that's how I found out about <laughs> and it. And it worked out. Yeah. So <laughs> walk me through just the process of the competition. Like, what all did you have to do? So basically, there were multiple rounds. Um, I think there were either four or five rounds um, of voting uh, uh, comp of the competition, and so each round you had to submit a video of a certain song or a certain cut that they wanted. And um, the first round, it was like a short little cut. It was like top 15, next round top 10, next round top five. And then the last round was top three. Um, and uh, I did not expect to get past the top 10 <laughs> or any round at all. Um, so that was surprising when they announced my name second. 
And uh, so they sent the top three to New York City to compete in the final, final round uh, in at Studio 54. Well, 54 Below. Um, it's also known as Studio 54. But 54 Below, um, where we would compete in one last round with the judges. Um, and each round had judges, too. But uh, to make it to the next round, we had to vote with our peers, with our communities. And, yeah, and uh, I, ultimately, I made it to the top three, and they flew us out to New York. That's amazing. So I got to know. Tell me about New York. What all did you get to do? What did so you see? So it was so fun. Uh, sure. it's my se- it was my second time in New York, but uh, this time they flew us there, all expenses paid. Um, they gave us uh, Broadway tickets uh, to a musical called Harmony. Um, and they also paid for a meal for us at the um, Brooklyn Delicatessen, um, and it was really good. <laughs> and we all we all ended up kind of ordering the same meal too, so that was really <laughs> interesting. Um, and I met the contestants; they were all so sweet. I still talk to some of them. Um, and um, uh, I made my Fifty Four Below debut. That was yes. amazing. And I also got to meet one of my uh, like favorite Broadway performers ever um, and he is playing the genie in Aladdin right now uh-huh. and seeing him was winning enough for me <laughs> like seeing all the judges especially but I followed him since I was basically in eighth or ninth grade and it was kind of eye-opening to know that I was making all these connections um, and yeah it was just a really fun experience and the only thing we had to pay for was like of course extra meals and a ticket for my dad because he really wanted to come support wow so. that sounds like an amazing trip yeah it do was do you see yourself um performing in the future like do you see this oh absolutely <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, i'm a musical theater major so i want to do this for a living mm-hmm. um and if not new york then i want to move to chicago and a lot of workshops happen there so that also make it to new york so either way i'll be up north um and just doing what I love to do. And I'm giving myself like a four, five year barrier. And if I don't end up like doing what I actually want to do, which is perform, then I will uh, ultimately, I want to choreograph um, and possibly own my own dance studio. So. Wow, and you'll do it all. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see your name on Broadway. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. Of course, thank but you. Back to the desk. We are so proud of Amaya and how she represented Washita. She certainly puts our name on the map and represents the awesome work the music and theater departments produce. Speaking of, coming up in the music, the Gospel Choir has a concert in Macbeth Recital Hall on April 8th at 7.30 p.m. and Guitar Mageddon is having a concert at 8 p.m. on April 9th in the Student Center right on the Dr. Jack stage. Also coming up that day is OSF Induction. The Washita Student Foundation, OSF, raises money for student scholarships and inducts new members each spring at 6.30 p.m. on the 9th at the Amphitheater. These new members will join the legacy of service and more legacies we want to talk about. Let's take a look at how our Tigers are doing in athletics. Chris Gay has the Roar Rundown for this week. Chris, fill us in. Good afternoon and welcome to the Roar Rundown. I'm Chris Gay. Let's jump into what happened in Washita Athletics over the last week. On Wednesday, Washita Baseball went into enemy territory to face the Arkansas Monticello Bow Weevils in a midweek doubleheader, and this would prove to be one of the most exciting games of the year in the Great American Conference. The Tigers would win the first game 14-8 thanks to the Tigers scoring 10 runs in the fourth inning. In that inning alone, the Tigers hit three home runs courtesy of a solo homer by Wesley Scott, a two-score homer by Michael Quinones, and a grand slam by Dustin Bermudez. Game two of the doubleheader was not as fruitful for Fort Washita. Though the game was tied at six runs apiece through seven innings, the Bow Weevils would score the game-winning run in the eighth. On Thursday, Washita's women's tennis team took a 5-2 victory over Louisiana Christian at home. The Tigers were able to win in the first and third positions in doubles with the duos of Austin Crocker and Natalia Zamora Capriolo winning a tiebreaker in the first position, and Shelly Davilis and Ruxandra Telescu winning in the third position. The Tigers were also able to record four wins in singles. 
Tiger baseball picked back up on Friday with the Mule Riders of Southern Arkansas coming into town. The Tigers would lose the series versus SAU, losing both games on Friday in their lone game on Saturday after heading into extra innings. Tiger softball also struggled against Southern Arkansas, but on their turf. The Tigers lost both games on Friday in Magnolia and lost their lone matchup on Saturday 1-7. Women's tennis was back in action on Saturday, but they would lose 2-5 in Russellville, taking on Arkansas Tech. Shelly Davilis and Rexandra Telescu took home the lone doubles win, and Washita's Calderova and Crocker earned the only singles wins. While everything else was happening over Easter weekend, Washita's women's track and field team competed in the Texas State Bobcat Invitational and the Oklahoma Baptist Invitational. Now, the majority of the team would make the trip to Shawnee, Oklahoma to compete in the OKBU invite that took place on Friday and Saturday. The Tigers would set three new school records and would record 15 top 10 finishes. Izzy Burrow finished second in the 800 meter, missing out on first by almost half a second, but breaking the previous OBU record by almost two seconds. Alicia Colburn placed third in the pole vault and set a new OBU record of 2.65 meters, which is eight feet and 2.25 inches for us non-track stars. Rachel Dunn placed third in the long jump and broke the previous school record by nine inches. At the Texas State Bobcat Invite in San Marcos, Texas, the small group of Tigers performed well against Division I opponents, setting two new school records. Belle Lindsay finished 17th in the 400 meter, but she did break the OBU record, which she set last year by more than a second. The 4x400 meter relay squad of Anna Woolsey, Laney White, JC McGregor, and Belle Lindsay broke the OBU record with just under four minutes. I think we all wish we were that fast. Like the women's team, the men also made the trip to Shawnee, Oklahoma, where they would post 13 top 10 finishes at the OKBU invite. The Tigers clearly were loving the 400 meter dash because four Tiger runners finished in the top 10 of the event. Gavin Rainey finished fourth, but was just six tenths of a second out from first place. Cole Ship finished sixth, Decavion Seals finished 8th, and Marcus McGee finished 10th. Plenty of other Tigers finished in the top 10, with Gabriel Greenwich finishing 2nd in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Russell Hensley placed 3rd in the javelin throw. Caden Callahan took 4th in the 110 meter hurdles and 7th in the 400 meter hurdles. MJ Ryman took 6th in the javelin throw. Jamison Flat finished ninth in the 800 meter, just two seconds out of second place, excuse me, first place. Zach Lane placed 10th in the triple jump. Keegan Pointer finished 10th in the 1500 meter and the four by 400 meter relay team of Marcus McGee, Gavin Rainey, Decavion Seals, Miller Goff placed 10th. Outside of the track teams, there was not an abundance of success in the other Tiger sports, but there is a chance that can change this weekend. Washita's women's tennis team will play on Friday in Durant, Oklahoma against Southeastern Oklahoma State at two o'clock. Tiger softball will host Harding with one game on Friday at four and a doubleheader on Saturday at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Tiger baseball will also be facing the Harding Bisons, but they will be playing in Searcy at 6 p.m. on Friday and in a doubleheader on Saturday at 1 and 4. We must really love competing against Harding because even our men's and women's track teams will be heading to Searcy to perform at the Bison Open on Saturday. OBU men's tennis will break the Bison streak as they travel to Topeka, Kansas to face Washburn at 2 p.m. They will then make the journey over on Sunday to Liberty, Missouri to play William Jewell University. Right after the solar eclipse, Washita baseball and softball will be playing in their Battle of the Ravine with baseball hosting the Henderson State Reddies at Rab Rogers Field on Tuesday at 3 p.m. and softball traveling all the way across the street to play the Lady Reddies at 5 p.m. 
In between those contests, Tiger women's tennis will play a different GAC opponent, this time in southern Arkansas at 3.30. Well, that will do it for the Rural Rundown. Don't forget to tune in to every home game on the Washita Sports Digital Network YouTube page. But if you can't, keep up with the latest news and scores at obutigers.com. Want even more in Tiger Athletics? Tune in every week to the Roar Rundown Sports Podcast for the latest and greatest news in Tiger Athletics. I'm Chris Gay. I hope everyone has a safe and pleasant day. Don't get caught up in that eclipse traffic. And go Tigers. Thanks, Chris. Well, some of those athletes are the very volunteers you'll see helping the community of Arkadelphia in the annual Tiger Serve Day. This Saturday, April 6th, is Tiger Serve Day, where students will spread out across the town and complete various service projects. We'll have some more on that for you after the event. But it's no secret that Washita students are very well versed in leadership, service, learning, and more. And some of our own communication students had the opportunity to attend the College Media Association Conference in New York City right before spring break. Barry Schneidman has more on that. Barry? Hello, Washita. I'm Barry Schneidman. Over spring break, students of the Washita's Communication Department got the chance to travel to New York City and attend various conferences and hear from different speakers and see a spot's iconic to the Big Apple. We are so glad these students got the chance to travel so far and learn more about the careers they wish to pursue. This is Barry Schneidman, back to the desk. This talk of New York can really put you in a travel mood. So that brings us to our question of the week. We asked our social media followers if they could travel to any major U.S. city, where would it be? Let's take a look at some of those responses. Isaac Lawson said Salt Lake City. Josh Ryan said Miami. John Merriman said Wyndham, Louisiana, and Joy Floyd said Philadelphia. Well, Brody, I think that if I were to take any trip in the U.S. to a city, I would probably go to Miami. I think that it'd be really nice to soak in that sun, but how about you? Me, I think I would probably pick Los Angeles. And although that may not be a lot of people's first choices, I've always wanted to go to California, and I think that would be a good city just to visit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope that you get the opportunity to travel there someday. Well, that's all we have for you today. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Washita News Show and to answer each question of the week. You just might see your responses pop up on the show. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Washita News Show, so you can never miss out on the latest and greatest Washita News. We'll see you next week.